Hi, beautiful people. You're welcome. Thank you so much for clicking. So, we're going to be checking out the most important verse in the Quran revealed by chat GPT. So, let's check it out, guys. Hello, guys. I am Han, and this is Kelly. Hi. We are Han Meditations, and we are back with another video. Today, we're going to be asking chat GPT and really getting into it. What is the most important verse from the Quran? Because I need to know. I need to know. I'm going to read the entire Quran in its entirety. We're going to do that soon. But I want to know right now what is the most important verse. And I want to hear it from Chat GPT's right. mouth. So unbiased opinion. And feel free to share your favorite verses in the comments. So if you're watching this, share your favorite verse from the Quran. Let me know where to read and we'll get For started sure. on this video. Hello, chat. I want you to read the Quran in its entirety. And from your opinion, what do you believe is the most important verse from the Quran? All of it. What is the most important verse? Go ahead and read it to me and tell me mm -hmm. why, why you believe that this is the most important verse. Give me your reasoning. Hello. One of the most widely regarded and important verses in the Quran is Al Ikhlas. Chapter 112, verse 1 to 4. Say he is Allah, who is one, Allah, the eternal refuge. He neither begets nor is born, nor is there to him any equivalent. I believe this verse is particularly significant because it captures the essence of monotheism, Tawheed, mm -hmm. the central belief in Islam. It declares the oneness of God, God, which is a core principle, not only in the Quran, but in Islamic belief as a whole. This verse emphasizes that Allah is unique, eternal, and incomparable, which is fundamental to understanding God's nature in Islam. It serves as a clear and concise declaration of faith, affirming that no one and nothing can be likened to or share in God's divinity. This verse resonates as the most important because it directly answers the question of who Allah is, providing clarity on the foundation of worship and the relationship between humanity and God. Wow, that is a beautiful verse. Can you give me another verse that you believe yeah. is one of the most important? Mm -hmm. I want a longer verse. I want to really hear you read it. And I really want to yeah. feel the power of the words in the Quran. Absolutely. Another verse that holds deep significance is from Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 255, known as Ayat al-Kursi, the throne verse. Here it is. There is no deity except him, the ever-living, the sustainer of existence. Neither drowsiness overtakes him, nor sleep. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. Who is it that can intercede with him except by his permission? Mm. He knows what is before them and what will be after them, and they Who encompass not a thing of his knowledge except for what he wills. His cursey extends over the heavens and the earth, and their preservation tires him not and he is the most high, the most great. This verse is incredibly powerful because it speaks to the limitless majesty, knowledge, and sovereignty of Allah. It affirms that nothing can exist or happen without God's will, and that he is the ultimate protector and preserver of all that exists. What strikes me about this verse is the portrayal of God's transcendence. Mm. He never tires, never rests, and is fully aware of everything in creation. Ayat al-Kursi is often considered one of the most profound verses because it encompasses so much about God's attributes, his omnipotence, omniscience, and eternal presence. Reciting it, you can feel the awe and majesty of God's power, and it's a reminder of how everything is under his control, reassuring believers of his protection and guidance. The verse invites reflection on our place in the universe and God's immense greatness beyond our comprehension. That is a beautiful verse. Tell me how God is described in the Quran. I want to know how God is described and how basically, you know, the words of God come out. I, I just want to know. I just want to want to hear it. I want to know how God is described. In the Quran, God Allah is described in numerous ways that highlight his attributes and transcendence. The Quran portrays Allah as the creator, sustainer, and ruler of the universe. Here are some of the key ways God is described. Allah is Al-Rahman, the most merciful, and Al-Rahim, the most compassionate, 
emphasizing his boundless mercy and care for his creation. The Quran frequently begins chapters with the phrase, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, reminding believers of his compassionate nature. God is also described as Al-Alim, the all-knowing, with knowledge that encompasses everything, past, present, and future. In Surah Al-Baqarah 2, 1 of 15, it says, to Allah belong the east and the west. Wherever you turn, there is the face of Allah. Indeed, Allah is all-encompassing and knowing. This demonstrates that nothing escapes his knowledge or control. Allah has Al-Aziz the mighty, Al-Malik the king, Al-Qadir the all-powerful, showing his supreme authority over all things. He has complete dominion over the heavens and the earth. For example, in Surah al hashr 523, it says, He is Allah, besides whom there is no God. The sovereign, the pure, the perfection, the giver of faith, the overseer, the exalted in might, the compeller, the superior. Mm -hmm. Another key attribute is Al-Ghafar, the forgiving. Mm -hmm. Allah's forgiveness mm -hmm. is emphasized throughout the Quran, showing that even though he is all-powerful, he is willing to forgive those who sincerely repent, as stated in Surah Al-Zumar 39, verse 53. Say, O oh, my servants who have transgressed against themselves by sinning, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. Lastly, God is Al-Wahad the One, and Al-Ahad the Unique, highlighting his singularity. There is nothing like him, and no one shares in his divinity. He has no partners, no equals, no children. This is captured in Surah Al-Ikhlas, which says, He neither begets nor is born, nor is there to him any equivalent. In the Quran, God's words are delivered with power, authority, and grace. They come across as both a guide and a command, revealing his nature as both merciful and just, compassionate yet mighty. He speaks of his signs in creation, his laws for humanity, and his ultimate judgment, mm. always reminding people to return to him for guidance and mercy. His words in the Quran aim to inspire awe, love, and devotion, as well as a sense of accountability and purpose. Mm. Wow. Mm. Wow. That was a lot. Very that, beautiful. I mean, I, whenever I listen to that, I can feel the high vibration energy. I really can feel the beauty of the words whenever I hear it. It really makes me like almost emotional. Like, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it feels like I want to cry or something when I'm listening to it. But it's yeah. just, you know. Because it's like these <sighs> these descriptions. Yeah. I mean, these are such these are such high vibrational descriptions, you know, like the most knowing, not just most knowing, all knowing most compassionate most merciful all forgiving i mean these are beautiful beautiful things and it just makes me think of like when people go to want to worship other deities and stuff is like is this how you would describe them you know like are they forgiving because no. like from what i know you 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 stop doing the things the 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 rituals and the this uh whatever the donations or whatever it's called to them and i i hear they start getting mad well, they did they forgive? Are they compassionate? Are they merciful? And so it's just like the most merciful, the most compassionate, the most forgiving. I mean, it's just pure beauty. So I want to be all wrapped up in that as much as I can. Yeah. And uh, that's the biggest takeaway whenever I was listening to it too, Kelly, is this the way that God is described it, Allah is just the most merciful, the the most forgiving, will forgive all sins, any sin. And a lot of people forgive that, man. And that's why it's like you really can't judge someone and where they're at in their life. If people are making mistakes, if people are doing certain, you cannot judge them because people are going to make mistakes, man. People are going to do certain things that you know, you're not going to agree with and you just have to let them learn because they have free will and you have to be the example and hope that they will come back to God. And mm -hmm. I believe that a lot of people will come back to God if you just if they just have the opportunity, if they can just see it for themselves, if they can mm -hmm. see someone else in the position, if they can this, you know, you just slide them the right information, the right tools, the right guide. You just maybe maybe you want to hand them a Quran, a Bible or whatever religion that you're in and you just show them, hey, check this out, you know, and, you know, no pressure, no rush, because whenever you're trying to force someone to do something and there's pressure involved and all that, you know, pressure can make diamonds, but it can also make dust. Mm. So. You know, it really just depends on the person. You have to just be the example for them. So 
man, that was so beautiful. I honestly feel really like emotional right now. We might just have to take a little break after this because I feel really, um, I don't know. It just feels like something changes within you when you start hearing the words. It really does. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being here. Definitely share the video if you like this kind of content, guys. And um, thank you for all your donations. It really helps keep the channel thank going. You, thank you. doesn't matter if it's one cent or one dollar. We read every single one of your messages. If you really want to contact us, that's the best way to do it. We're trying to find another way. But as of right now, the best way is to just do a PayPal, leave a message or, you know, send us an email or something like that. Or, or like give us an email address or an Usually, at. I'd probably email be best. Yeah. But if you give us your email. If you leave a uh, you leave a donation, leave your email in there. Oh yeah, and you have yeah, a message yeah. for us yeah, because yeah. sometimes we can't read the full message. Yeah. So if you just leave a donation, leave your email, then it'd be the, the best way that we can actually read your message and contact you back. So thank you guys so much for being here. We'll see you in the, in the next, next video. video. Oh wow, that was a beautiful one. Uh, I love the the important verses, and if we look at this, listen to what was said you notice that it all spoke about god hala the potter versus is all centered on hala how allah is the one and only you know is the supreme being is you know you know it's just letting us understand that allah is the one and they believe that there's only one god and which is allah and i love the names there was a particular video I listened to and it was 99 names. And to know that Allah is all merciful, all knowing, all forgiving, is something that is so beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to know that God actually has all these attributes because as human beings we fail each other. But one thing about God is that He's always merciful, forgiving is the powerful one and that was a beautiful one thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one